Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about UFC Fight Night Gilbert Burns vs. Sean Brady. Today we're going to be doing a full card breakdown. So that means one video, but it's going to be very, very long. If I can, if I have the time, I for surely will add the timestamp down below. Otherwise, you can skip around and I will talk about the fires before I go down and breaking it in and talking about it. So first, pretty uh, first off the bat, how my feelings on this card, not a bad card. I don't think it's great, but it like last weekend, um, I'm recording this August 26th. Uh, last night's card was freaking awesome if you're seeing this a uh, little bit later on. But again, members will see this tomorrow probably. Either way. First, we start with a rescheduled match. Nathan Fletcher versus ooh, Zima, Zigamontes versus Zigamontes Ramaska versus uh, Nathan Fletcher. So Ramaska 9-2, 4-1 in his last five fights. That fighting Nathan Fletcher, who's 8-1, 4-1 in his last five fights. You know, Z Ramaska fighting like a tender, uh, not like a tender, on the ultimate fight. Yeah, Ultimate Fighter, the tough uh, Alexa Grasso versus uh, Alentino. That's not correct. Shevchenko. Wow. Had a brain uh, brain shut off there for a second. But he has nine finishes. All of his fin all of his wins are finishes. Also has five first round finishes. Has been finished once in his career. Lost to B uh, Bibbert Terminoff. Uh, punches referee stoppage in the first round back in 2018 six years ago he's 20 to 21 years old at that time 511 which i think plays big in this matchup with nathan fletcher like i said also eight and one or eight and one was finished by dominique wooding two years ago head kick 26 years old typically fights at a lower weight class so i think ramaska's fight going down a weight class i believe he's going down a weight class either way i i really like ramaska in this one i think he's a little bit more well-rounded his striking is a little bit my a little bit more diverse like i said nine finishes he has five finishes by tko or ko four by submission nathan fletcher like i said eight wins total 26 years old again you're younger seven finishes out of his eight wins only one by TKO or KO. Six of them are submissions. He has four first round finishes. Eight and one in the Cage Warrior promotion. Pretty freaking awesome. And has he beaten great competition? Pretty good competition. Pretty dang good. He had a pretty long uh, amateur record as well. Six and one. And now he's eight and one in his uh, pros. I just think Ramaska is a little bit more well-rounded. I, I, I really, really like the striking and the, and the takedown defense of Ramaska. I like him a lot, especially in this type of a matchup. Is it going to be competitive in points? Absolutely. But I think the output of uh, Ramaska wins him this fight. Next, we have a also another decent decent matchup. You got the old guys, OSP versus Ryan Span. Ryan Span's not that old, but OSP's 41. OSP 27 wins, 17 losses. He's 2 and 3 in his last five fights. Fighting Ryan Span, 21 and 10, 2 and 3 in his last five fights. On a three fight losing streak, not a good losing streak as well. He was flatlined by Bogdan Guskov. Called that one three months ago. Lost before that against Anthony Smith and a Terrible split decision, as if the first fight was good. And then lost to Nikita Krylov triangle. Just made some stupid decisions in that matchup. Kick coming off the crazy knockout win of Dominic Reyes. Oh, wait. Crazy? No. <laughs> OSP, like I said, 41 years old. 6'3 with an 80-inch reach. Fighting Ryan Span, 6'5, who has a 79-inch reach. Two inch in height for span with a, a one inch reach advantage for OSP. <clears throat> the, the the biggest problem I have with this matchup is it, it's kind of like two uh, the tales of two stories because OSP I think if he can make it grimy, ugly, dirty, he's gonna look good in this fight. He has twenty seven wins, like I said, seventeen losses. He's been finished eight out of seventeen times. Majority of his career he was pretty durable. 
I know Ryan Spann definitely has some good power. He is fast, but he's very, very chinny. Now, OSP has been finished five times. Now, Felipe Lins, 2023. Tanner Bozer, 2021. Jamal Hill, 2020. That's three. So, before that, you know, the last person to finish him was Jimmy Manuel back in 2016. Wild. Wild. Craziness. But, again, kind of turn back the clock against Kennedy and Zekaju. Kennedy started very slow in that fight. And OSP looked pretty damn good. Now, <clears throat> I do think early on, Ryan Spann, because he does tend to go and he has more power, he's going to have to push the pace in this matchup. I am worried about the durability, especially early if OSP starts slow. I am worried about that because Ryan Spann has power. He's fast. Coming off of a three-fight losing streak, he has to do something and do something impressive. This could be the end of his UFC career if he doesn't turn it around right now. And he's 33 years old. You know, <clears throat> 18 finishes, but he's been finished 7 out of 10 times. And 4 of them by TKO or KO. You know, 7 and 5 in the UFC, and 4 of them are uh, finishes. And the one loss is also someone who finished him, Anthony Smith. A fight that he clearly could have won. The crazy part is, is in the UFC banner, like contender series, and the UFC has been finished five times. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But yeah, Bogdan, who is, I would say, levels below him, rankings-wise, smashed him. Smashed him. Now, Ryan Spain, like I said, he's very fast. He does tend to have some pretty good submissions. He can slow the fight down very, very well. I don't think I trust Ryan Spann's chin. Almost more than I don't trust OSP. Now, can I be proven wrong? 100%. Spain can go out there and flat land him in the first round. I believe he is a good amount, too. 60, 16 first round finishes. And OSP, so that's 16 first round finishes. And OSP has uh, 14 first round finishes. So 30 combined first round finishes for these two gentlemen. Okay, well, that's something, let me tell you. But uh, I, I like OSP in this one. I, I think OSP does a very, very good job. Next, we have Rongzu versus Chris Padilla. Rongzu, 25 wins, 5 losses, 4 and 1 in his last 5 fights. His last loss was against Ignacio Baja Mendez. Been out of the UFC since then, and he's been he's made his way back. 4 wins in a row. 24 years old, 5'9", with a 72 and a half inch reach. Fighting Chris Padilla, he's 14 and 6, 4 and 1 in his last five fights. Last loss was two months ago. Darren Smith Jr., split decision loss. 28 years old, 5'9", with a 74 inch reach. One and a half inch reach advantage for Chris Padilla with the same height as well. This one's interesting. Rong Zhu has looked really, really good uh, coming back. He's only 24 years old. 21 finishes out of his 25 wins, and he has tons, 12 first round finishes. And the crazy part is he has seven submissions, but he has 14 TKOs or KOs. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. One and two in the UFC previously have submitted and decisioned. Like I said, Baham, ba, Ignacio Baja Mendez finished him with a Bravo choke. In the third round, uh, Rodrigo Vargas uh, beat him by decision, and he destroyed Brandon Jenkins. So, got out of the UFC, got some big wins, and now he is back. And he is dangerous. I like Long Zhu a lot in this matchup. Like I said, 21 finishes out of his 25 wins. He also has 12 first-round finishes. Chris Padilla is the guy that's going to want to grapple. He's, he, I mean, he and uh, um, Rongzu has been submitted before, I believe once. Um, I believe once. Now I got to check. I believe once he's been submitted. Four times. Uh, I was not correct by that. <laughs> Four times he's been submitted. He's 16 and 2 in the Wing WLF. That's crazy. And again, I, I think this is a different fighter than we've seen before in his previous run in the UFC. 
I think this is a different guy. Chris Padilla is good if he gets certain positions. He can really, really do well in this matchup. But, you know, only two fights of his career have been to a decision, so he has 12 finishes, and he has tons of them in the first four, or uh, 10 first round finishes. Jesus, so many first round finishes. Has been finished three of six times in his career, once by TKO, twice also by submission. He has been finished before. He fin he did finish a James Lion top rear naked choke in the first round. Um, who's the guy that finished up? Jason Gonzalez, I don't think. Oh, he was in UFC. Drew Dober destroyed him, which was awesome. Jim Miller destroyed him. Gregor Gillespie. Yeah, that was that was good. Yeah, <clears throat> I like Wong Zhu in this matchup. I just think he's a little bit more explosive, a little bit more well-rounded. And as long as he can stop those takedowns, he's going to do very, very well. Next, we have Gabriel Santos versus Yenzo. Yenza? 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 Yenza's his name? Gabriel Santos, 10-2, and 3-2 and two in his last five fights. There's an argument he beat Lerone Murphy. And that guy's on a crazy run. Just beat Barboza, just beat uh, Joshua Kulabau. 27 years old, 5'9", with a 70-inch reach. Got absolutely mauled by an uppercut by David Onama. It was a beautiful uppercut. Like I said, fighting y y Yaza, who 25 wins, 4 losses, 4-1 four, uh, th uh, in his last 5 fights. The one loss was against Jing Young Lee, split decision. I think that guy just lost as well. He was flatlined by uh, uh, Hydra Mill, I believe that's what that was. 5'7", the 71-inch reach, 1-inch reach advantage for... Yanz, Yaza, Yaza, Yaza. It, you know, with Gabriel Santos, like I said, he looked really good against Laurent Murphy. Seven finishes out of his 10 wins. He has that one TKO loss, or KO loss, really. Hasn't fought since 2023. I like the time taken off. Learn, people. And he's only 27. You can afford that. You can afford to take that time off. You know, has five first round finishes, four submissions. Look for him to really, really. Uh, implement his striking and defensive wrestling. I really like him in here. The problem I do think is when he's fighting Yin's Young Yaiza, ah, 27 years old, like I said, three fight winning streak, I believe it was. Yeah, three fight winning streak. He's just, you know, 19 finishes, 14 submissions. The, the thing I struggle with in this one is if he, you know, he does have. 15 first round finishes, 12 first round subs. Again, the problem I have with it is he does put himself in bad positions. He's also very crafty looking for submissions. I think Santos's movement and defensive wrestling can really, really help him in this matchup. I really do. And I, I think Santos honestly can get him out of there. Unless this two fight losing streak that he's on is just completely derailed him. I really, really like Gabriel Santos in this matchup. Next, we got Andre Petrovsky versus Dylan Budka. Budka? Budka, probably Budka. Andre Petrovsky, 11 and 3, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. Got a big win against Josh Brown three weeks ago. I love that he's turned him around. You know, a lot got, got KO'd by a hip by Jacob Malkoon, and then Michelle Pereira finished him real quick. 33 years old, 6 foot tall with a 73 inch reach. Fighting. What is this fucking thing? Get out of here. Fighting Dylan Butka, who's 7-3, and three, got destroyed by Cesar Almeida. Other than that, you know, he's 3-2 and two in his last five fights. 24 years old, 6 foot tall with a 75-inch reach. 2-inch reach advantage for Dylan Butka. The problem is, again, I think Petrovsky is the stronger guy. All this fight really comes down to is, can Petrovsky's cardio hold up? I think he's a better wrestler i think he's stronger on top you know the thing that's hurt petrovsky is really getting tired or getting caught early and he's been finished three times yes one in the first but a lot of the other times he's been finished was um uh you know him getting tired the jigam alcun one was him getting tired it gets ko'd you know uh aaron jeffrey yeah watch that one if you haven't watched that fight in the second round ridiculous won a split decision against Jeremy Merchard who just broke Anderson Silva's finish record actually holds it now I think 13 maybe 12 something 
and uh, wrestled Josh Ram, who offered really nothing. Now you look over at Dylan Butker, like I said, it's seven and three coming off of a striker. Yeah, you know, Cesar Almeida. He has three finishes out of his seven wins. He's not a guy that finishes anybody. He has two finishes in the first round. That has been submitted also or as well. I, I really, really like. And he's fought absolutely nobody besides the two losses that he has. I mean, he's fought no one. Nobody. I, I really like Andre Pachowski. It just worries me a little bit because of his cardio. But I'm going Andre Pachowski to win this matchup. Probably either by late submission or decision. Next, we have Isaac Dalgarian versus Brandon Marat. This is a fun one. Isaac Dalgarian, 6 and 1, 4 and 1, his last five fights. There's an argument again. He did not lose that fight against Christian Rodriguez, 100%. 28 years old, 5'7 with a 71 inch reach. Fighting Brandon Marat, who's 8 and 2, 4, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. 28 years old. 5'9 with a 70 inch reach, 2 inches in height for Marat, and a 1 inch reach advantage for Dalgarian. Now, Brendan Marat, like I said, coming in with 8 wins, 6 of them by finish, 5 by uh, 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 TKO or KO, 3 of them in the first round. Got absolutely destroyed by Terrence McKinney, 20 seconds in. Wild. Wild. Like I said, does have 4 first round finishes, but. I say Dalgarian, once he gets a hold of you, typically you're not getting away. I know Rodriguez was able, was able to survive and make it very competitive, which brought the, him somehow winning a decision. I still don't know how that makes sense. Six finishes out of his six wins. And he's on the decision once and he looked pretty good in that decision. Got a little tired towards the end, but it was a crazy, crazy pace. Yeah, I, I really, really like Isaac Dalgarian. We just see what Francis Marshall did to uh, Dennis Bazookia. And Francis Marshall kind of handled him, really, at least for two rounds. And Christian, Rod you know, Christian Rod Rodriguez showed that he's durable, unless you're Julian Rosa. Let's go do CJ. Yeah, I, I really like Isaac Dalgarian in this one. I think he wins probably by submission or TKO, ground and pound, like it's on top. I like him a lot in this matchup. Next, we have Jacqueline Amorum, Amorum versus Vanessa Demopoulos. Robbery coming in. Jacqueline Amorum, 8 in 1, 4 in 1 is la in, in her last four fights. The one loss is against Sam Hughes. 29 years old, 5'3 with a 68 inch reach. I think Vanessa Demopoulos, who's 11 and 5, 4 and 1 as well in her last five fights. Lost to Carolina Kovalkiewicz, which thank you. I like Carolina a lot. 35 years old, 5'2 with a 59 and a half inch reach. 8 and a half inch reach expansion for Jacqueline Amorum. With a one inch in height as well. The the fun thing with this one, I think, oh, in this fight is eight finishes out of her eight wins. Six she has six submission in the first round, with also seven first round finishes. This is a girl that goes for the finish all the time. Any and all of the time. Vanessa Demopoulos, five finishes out of her eleven wins. She typically she has eleven decisions. And she's won six. She lost five of them. Now, this is a girl that is able, that is um, not great defensively. She does get tagged quite a bit, but she's able to make it ugly. She's able to weather the storm. She's able to, again, make it ugly, make it close enough where this judges give it to her. I mean, that's two of them. I didn't think she'd be Marada. She's on the ground a lot, and somehow judges gave it to her. You know, the Dakota fight, no, no, did not think she won that one at all. She does have some submissions on her back. I just think Jacqueline Amorum with the big reach is going to do very well. And if it goes to the ground, she's just more dangerous down there on the ground as well. So, yeah, I really like Jacqueline Amorum. I think she gets the job done probably by decision. I don't really see her finishing Dem the Van Vanessa Demopoulos, but I do like it. Next, we have Andre Lima versus Felipe Dos Santos. And Felipe Dos Santos really did not look good against Victor Altamoreno. Probably didn't, didn't win it. Shouldn't have gotten the win for that one. But but Andre Lima, 9-0. Absolutely weird fight against Mitch Raposo. Let's be real. Had a disqualification against Igor Severino, which he ended up winning from a bite. I thought Severino was kind of turning that fight around. And uh, was on its way to kind of win that fight. 25 years old, 5'7", with a 67 and a half inch reach. 
beat Felipe Dos Santos, who's 8-1, 4-1 in his last five fights. Obviously, that loss is against Manel Top, who is a top five contender. I don't think he looked good at all against Victor Altamoreno, but he looked looked damn good against Manel Cop. You know, 70-inch reach for Felipe Dos Santos with 5'7 as well. Two and a half inch reach advantage for Felipe Dos Santos. It really depends on which Felipe Dos Santos shows up. The Manel Cop one, he makes that fight an absolute barn burner. The guy that showed up against Victor Altamoreno, Andre Lima, kind of works him in the last two rounds. I like Andre Lima. I think he's, his ability to adapt to the fights, if it's not really going his way early, like he's had success, but there's some, you know, some, um, um, some weird stuff coming back at him. Some, uh, kind of, if it, if it's a little bit competitive, he's able to kind of change up the game plan. I like I like his uh, IQ on the fly. So I I like Andre Lima. I think he does really really well in this matchup, unless it's the guy that fought Manel Cop shows up. Next, we got uh, Kyle Nelson versus Steve Mean Garcia. Kyle Nelson, 16-5-1, and 3-1-1 fi- one and one in his last five fights. Steve fight winning streak, 33 years old, 5'11", with a 71-inch reach. Fighting Steve Garcia, who's 16-5, and 4-1 and one in his last five fights. The one loss was a crazy counter by uh, Mah- Mahashadi Hayazir Hayazir two years ago. He's been on a crazy winning streak. Crazy four finish streak. 32 years old, six foot tall with a 73 inch reach, one inch in height, and two inch in reach for Garcia. The problem I have with this is at this point, for some reason, Kyle Nelson has figured out that how not to put himself in danger, and he's done a pretty good job about that. You know, with Blake Builder, he beat him up. You know, Fernando Padilla, I don't know, understand that game plan. He did very well. I, I I thought Padilla would light him up. Nope. And then Bill Algio, he was able to actually finish, which was nuts. Had to be a broken orbital because you don't see Bill Algio quitting like that at all. But as much as I want to go Steve Garcia, and I think he can really, really find that big punch, Kyle Nelson just seems to find a way to make Steve, uh, make fighters fight him different than how they typically fight. I don't get it. I don't understand it. He see, somehow slows these guys down. I don't know what he's doing in there. I don't know if he hits so hard. Just stops all of their game plan. It just shuts everything down. I don't get it at all. I want Steve Garcia. I will be rooting for him. But I think Kyle Nelson, by a weird fight, not trading with Garcia, I think Kyle Nelson gets the job done. I can't believe I'm gonna say that. I think he does, but I want Steve. I want uh, Steve Garcia to win. Kyle Nelson probably winning. Next, we have Trevor Peak versus Yanel Ashmas. Now this is a barn burner. Nine and two, three and two in his last five fights. One and two in his last three. Losing to Chepe Marsco, who is an absolute monster. Beat Muhammad Yaya, which is not good. He's not good, and then lost to Charlie Campbell. Charlie Campbell just was a little bit more uh, technical and had better defense. 29 years old, 5'9", with a 70-inch reach. Fighting Yanel Ashmas, who's 7-1, 4-1 his last five fights. The last loss that he had was against Chris Duncan. I believe he broke his arm also in that fight. 29 years old, 5'9", with a 68-inch reach. 2-inch in reach for Trevor Peak. The thing with this one is like, in his last one, I'm pretty sure he broke his arm in the Chris Duncan fight. He absolutely destroyed Sam Patterson. He has nasty power. Six finishes. Also, only two first-round finish. I believe Sam Patterson was in the first. Yeah, absolutely does have some power. But, but you know, he has two in the third, one in the second. His one submission in the third. I like Yano. I think he hits very, very hard. But the weird style of Trevor Peak, I think, gives Yano a lot to think about. I just don't think he lets his hands go enough. I think Trevor Peak wins a decision here, probably. I don't think he finds that shot on Yano. Yano has a good chin. I, I just see Trevor Peak being able to over overload him. Um, have a lot of volume on him. Eight finishes in, uh, um, by TKO or KO. Six of them are in the first round. He's only been decision three times. He's lost two of them, 1-1. One, one. 
I don't think he's been to decision. Or he won by BIA by decision. And then beat Campbell. But I absolutely destroyed Eric Gonzalez. Jesus. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I really like Trevor Peak in this one. I would like to see Yano win. I think he has big power and he's able to catch Peak. He might be able to hurt him. We don't really see Peak hurt that often. But I think Trevor Peak's weird, awkward style kind of wins him in this matchup. Just matchup wise, it fits Trevor Peak. Next, we got uh, Cheney, Matt Schnell versus Alessandro Costa. Matt Schnell, 16 and 8, 1 and 1, 3, 0 oh, and 1 in his last five fights. <clears throat> 34 years old, 5'8", with a 70-inch reach, fighting Alessandro Costa, who's 14-4, and 3-2 and two in his last five fights, coming off that big win against Kevin Bajorez, 28 years old, 5'4", with a 67-inch reach, 3-inch reach advantage for Costa, with a 4-inch in height for Schnell. The problem is, is where Schnell is good, is which is on the ground, submissions, all those things, I don't think Matt Schnell is going to be able to do that. I don't think he's going to be able to implement his game plan. Alessandro Costa, you know, with 14 wins, you know, he's been, he's has 11 finishes with six of them by submission. Where Matt Schnell is good is on the ground. That's where he's good. You know, he's 34 years old. He has nine finishes by submission. He's also been finished twice. He has 11 finishes overall, but he's been finished five times by punches. He's also been finished four times in the first round by punches. This guy is so chinny. It's it's he has he's lost five times in the UFC by punches. It's crazy. I think all six of them actually are by finish. Yeah, all six of his losses in, in the UFC are by finish. I like us as, as Alessandro Costa by finish. Probably a big punch, possibly even a submission after the big punch. I think Costa gets in there, wraps him up, beats him up, sends matching out to the retirement home. Next, we got Jessica Andrade versus Natalia Silva. This is a fun one. Natalia Silva, 17, 5, and 1. She's on a big, big winning streak. Got 11 wins in a row, which means she was 6, 5, and 1. And uh, when before she went on this big winning streak, which is crazy. 27 years old, 5, 4, the 65 inch reach. Fighting Jessica Andrade, former champion. 26, uh, 26 and 12, 2 and 3 in the last five fights. She looked pretty good in her last two wins, destroying Mackenzie Dern and getting a split decision against Marina Rodriguez, which should not have been a split. 32 years old, 5'1 with a 62 inch reach, 3 inches in height for Natalia Silva, and 3 inches in reach as well for Silva. I do think Andrade's power could be a bit of a problem, but let's be real. Natalia Silva is flashy. She's very elusive. She has good footwork. I really like Natalia Silva in this matchup. She has 12 finishes and also has eight first round finishes as well. She has been finished three times in her career, but none of them obviously are in the UFC. Also lost to Marina Rodriguez. That was her last loss. That's interesting. Her, her The one time she was finished by ground and pound was her very first fight back in 2015. But, uh, yeah, I like Natalia Silva. I think her creative striking, her good distance control really, really helps her in this matchup. She has, like I said, she's very, very creative as a striker, but she also has seven finish, seven submissions and five TKO or KOs. Andrade obviously has fought, probably fought the better competition. I don't think there's an argument there, for, you know, really. She has 18 finishes out of her 26 wins, but she's been finished nine out of 12 losses. Submitted four times she's also been finished three times in the first round one by punches i mean two by punches and one by submission yeah i like natalia silva i think she gets the job done 100 mm percent -hmm. next we got gilbert burns versus sean brady gilbert burns 22 wins seven losses two and three in his last five fights on a two fight losing streak 38 years old 510 with a 71 inch reach fighting sean brady who's 16 and one four and one in his last five fights the one loss against Bilal Muhammad. Got the win back against Kelvin Gassam. Submitted him eight months ago. I think he was supposed to fight Vicente Luque. Had a hand injury. Talked about it on JRE's episode. Which is, I was why I was weird. It was weird that he was scheduled for a fight. 31 years old. 5'10 with a 72 and a half inch reach. One and a half inch reach advantage for Sean Brady. Gilbert Burns in this matchup. It's weird because you know. He has nine, that's uh, 12, 
referees 15 finishes, but he's been finished by punches three times. He's never been submitted. The hard thing is, I do think Brady's going to be able to take down Gilbert Burns. I don't think he necessarily has to submit Burns to beat him. Now, a five-rounder can make that very weird because does Gilbert Burns start fast and then run out of gas and Brady wins 3-2? Or does Brady start very quick and get tired and has to survive the last two rounds? Either one of those is an option. You know, Sean Brady, even though he did fold against Bilal, hasn't really had any bad uh, any bad uh, moments. You know, won a decision against Craig Jones. That's impressive. Submitted Ben Saunders with Kimura round number one. And then, like I said, submitted Kelvin Gaslam in round number three. Took him down with ease. It was wild. Submitted Jake Matthews. You know, beat Court McGee. But, all right, you know. Again, the problem is, is do you bank that Brady can just get takedown after takedown after takedown and just stay, you know, um, careful enough to don't give any, don't give Gilbert Burns any chance to get up or to get a submission? Like I said, he has nine of them. I, I think Sean Brady's going to be able to beat up uh, Gilbert Burns. I think for a little bit he's going to get be getting control. I think at some point he's going to feel Burns starting to get tired, and then he's going to turn it on while he has him down there on the ground. I like Sean Brady. He sliced at sixteen and one. I, I just like him. I, I think I even think we see him starting to go to like side control, beat him up. You beat Gilbert Burns up, and then once he goes to mount, I think he's gonna start uh, pounding out Gilbert Burns, and then possibly look for some submissions. But I think he finishes Gilbert Burns in the mount position. I like Sean Brady a lot. Eight finishes overall. He has been finished, like I said, by Bilal. Eight decisions, so he is the decision guy. Does have six finish. His wins in the UFC are by are, uh, three. <laughs> She's three by submission, three by decision. So again, I just don't think he's submitting Gilbert Burns. That'd be very impressive. But I do think he's going to be bigger, stronger, at least early. He's going to be bigger, stronger, and faster than Gilbert Burns. I like Sean Brady. I think he has the job done. And as always, guys, if you agree, if you disagree, if you hate my picks, all of these things, let me know down there in the comment section. And as always, peace.